and welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But to start things off, what are we drinking today? Uh, no name to it, but it's just a German Hefeweizen with Hellertau Blancops. Mm, it's very nice, easy drinking. Mm -hmm. Today we're going to be talking about 1972's Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. Yeah. And this was a movie that was recommended to us a long time ago by one of our very good friends, Carl Woods. <laughs> the movie was directed by Bob Clark. He's done two very notable horror movies. This one and Black Christmas. He did a Christmas Story and uh, Porky's. This movie was written by Alan Ormsby and the director, Bob Clark. The movie starts off in this great kind of schlocky way with these kind of ghouls in mm -hmm. the cemetery and they're kind of digging this grave or something approach this guy <laughs> his man yeah, in the woods and it kind of goes towards him and like ah and that's it and then it takes us to the main cast of characters in this movie which is like a, a theater troupe led by the character Alan played by Alan Ormsby they're on this boat on the way to an island. You don't really know why they're going there yet. We find out it's like a cemetery. They reach this kind of cottage. In the meantime, he's also being a complete prick to <laughs> everyone else, threatening to fire them from his theater troupe. He pulls out this fucking trunk, <laughs> some tickle trunk like Mr. Dress Up. He pulls out some mystical robe, and then he pulls out this like old book. He claims he wants to raise the dead by reading these funerary incantations <laughs> and demon resurrection passages. Part of this is they need a corpse to finish this funerary fun incantation. incantation. So they head out to the cemetery to dig up a corpse. Bah, this guy pops out of the grave <laughs> and scares the shit out of them. It's one of their theater buddies who has been planted there to play a prank on these guys. I peed my pants! Yeah, <laughs> and he keeps saying I it. I peed my pants! <laughs> The coffin that had one of their buddies in it, they took the corpse out of that. Kept that corpse to the side. And the corpse's name is Orville. Opens up the book and he's, he does his big chant. Kind of feels a little half-assed or, you know... And, and hokey? Yeah. So one of the girls in the group, she's like, Step aside, I'll do this, I know how to do it. But nothing happens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so, you know, kind of looking around. And they end up just going back to the cottage and they take poor... Orville, the corpse, with them. The two guys that pulled the prank, they leave them there in the cemetery to sort of bury the graves back up. They go to rebury this guy. See, he's got a nice flashy ring. And so one of the guys goes to grab the ring off and ding! All those weird sounds and all that shit worked. All yeah. that, you know, it really worked. This wasn't a joke. You start to see hands coming out of the ground. Out of the ground. And it kind of cuts back to the cottage. Playing around with Orville, treating him like his own personal pet. And he's all laying with him and everything and talking to him. And so it's getting really strange. The one guy who managed to get away starts running towards the cottage. And the dead are starting to rush this cottage, right? Yeah. This cabin. And so they start boarding everything up. They're gonna go to the front of the cottage and distract all the zombies. One guy's gonna slip out the side and take the boat and go to the city and get help for everybody. It sorta works. <laughs> it works for it, about 10 seconds. The first part of the plan it, it, works. Yeah. The guy leaves, but then after, they go and shine a light on where he was supposed to have left. Ding! He's all being eaten. Yeah, he's being all eaten. So they say to Alan, well, isn't there any passages in that book that can send these things back? And that's where we're going to end it. Yeah. If you want to see what happens with the troop, keep watching Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. It's a super neat movie. The first thing that stuck out to me really was the sound design. Because there's no music. It's just sound effects. Weird synthesizer noises and bleeps and... Yeah, bleeps. And no. screams bombards your yeah. senses, yeah. right? Adds to the craziness of the movie. When they're outside, all the constant crickets. It helps yeah. to put you there and yeah. that they're isolated, yeah. right? There's no help from 
anybody from the outside world. No, yeah, not at all. It's cool. If there was more music to this movie, I think it would have distracted. It would have yeah. taken away, actually. Not every horror movie needs a theme song as long as what's there works. Yeah, exactly. You know? Also, what works in this movie, and mostly what the movie's about, is all the characters. Especially Alan. It's just this fucking prick who you want to fucking just... Pretentious... <laughs> Asshole. Oh, like, yeah. oh, man. The magnitude of your simplitude. I love how the character is written. You know, yeah. it's written very well. He's written to be a pretentious prick who thinks he's good, but really, he's just an idiot. Yeah. You know? And he's a fucking coward, yeah. too, basically. Yeah. On top of it, yeah. <laughs> All of the characters, they joke around, so you get the sense that they're close. Close, yeah. right? But they don't joke around so much that it gets ridiculous and it starts to take away yeah. from what they're supposed to be doing in the movie. Yeah. Another thing that works with this movie is the campiness. Because the way it starts off with those ghouls and stuff, it's like, okay, you know, right off the bat, we're in for a bit of a camp fest. They mm -hmm. use the low budge of the movie in their own favor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Alan Ormsby himself did most of the makeup for yeah. it, right? And he just used, like common household shit that was lying around like yeah. his mother's house. Fuck, that stuff looks great! It works. I love the zombie design in this. On record, I'll say the zombie design on this is better than Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, because they it's just people painted blue and, yeah. <laughs> and Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, and this is years before Dawn of the Dead, right? <laughs> yeah. I love that zombie look, that yeah. falling apart zombie look. Yeah, and I like the... Uh, because you see a lot of them are wearing, like, suits and yeah, stuff, right? Yeah, because they're buried and they're... Exactly, know. yeah. And they're dirty and shit, yeah. right? And so you see a lot of the zombies from behind, too, right? And they're just kind of running towards, like, one of the guys. And it's like, you don't need to see what they look like. Yeah. Just to know that it's a zombie yeah. and they're dirty and everything. That's all you need. Yeah, for sure, yeah. You know. Okay, this is 1972. Evil Dead came out in 1980. 81. 81. So. The whole reading from the book in the cabin to raise the dead mm -hmm. by accident, kind of thinking it's a prank, that is way before Evil Dead. And I think that mm -hmm. Sam Raimi had to have been influenced by this movie a little bit. Yeah, I think so. These people, like in this movie, they, they're the cause of all this shit, yeah. right? In Night of the Living Dead, you don't see what causes it, yeah. right? And so this is like, again, one of the maybe one of the first movies where these people cause their own fate stumble and, upon it kind of like <laughs> stupidly right yeah, yeah yeah but they did it yeah you know they're the ones who fucked up and it's like you can see that in even like return of the living dead or something right where yeah. again like they caused all this yeah. shit <laughs> and you can see a lot of how this movie has influenced other zombie slash dead coming from the grave dead rising from the grave <laughs> type movies you know in the future mm -hmm. we're not quite sure if it's like one of the first zombie movies that maybe showed actual zombies coming out of the ground out of the ground the director actually wanted to remake it but he what he died in a car car accident right? yeah before he was able to, to yeah. do it or get, or get the project going one of the reasons i really like this movie too is because it reminds me of something that we would do or that we have done. Kids. Kids making a zombie movie for shits and giggles, to have fun. In junior high, we've made zombie movies in the basement and like, I felt like I was watching something that I would make. Yeah. You know, if I if we had the budget back then, we would have made that movie. Yeah. You know? yeah. That's what I like about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, it's kind of a, uh close to the heart yeah, sort of it is almost. totally wrap it up <laughs> if you're in the mood for man any zombie movie yeah. basically check out children shouldn't play with dead things it's up there in one of the top influencing movies of the zombie slash horror genre yeah i think, I think so yeah if you're a fan of night living dead zombie yeah even the old hammer like Plague of the Zombies has kind of got that zombie look to him a little bit. Yeah, check it out. 1972's Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. And neither should you. <laughs> but you should keep, keep drinking. Keep drinking.